G'day and welcome to my channel, The Homebrew Network. We're here for one reason today, and that's because Cheeky Peak Brewery are giving you guys a chance to win one of these systems, a TK36. It's a turnkey brewing system. And just before we start, I'd like to thank Cheeky Peak for supplying the unit to me for review and for giving you the chance to win one. So let's take a closer look and then I'll give you all the details you need to enter. Anywhere, worldwide competition this is. You don't have to live in Australia for this. They will send it overseas. So keep watching. So as mentioned, this is the Cheeky Peak TK36. As far as I know, TK stands for turnkey. 36 stands for 36 litres, which is the very full volume of the kettle. Cheeky Peak delivered this version to me. It's not quite complete. There's one or two things that might change. I don't have the right gauges. But if you go through the links in the description, it'll take you to their website and you can check out exactly what you do get. As with all these systems, there can be a lot of personalization. So just double check you're getting what you think you're getting. It's a very compact unit, less than a meter square. It's roughly 70 centimeters by 90 centimeters, three foot by two foot, four inches. It comes with a 36 litre kettle, which is about 9.5 gallons, and two 30 litre fermenters, which is about 7.9 gallon. If we start at the single vessel mash tun, we'll start, that's where the temperature probe goes. So it's a bit hard to do one handed, there you go. And we come out of the mash tun down course to the inlet of the pump. We come out of the pump and it splits off. One part you can control via taps can go back for the whirlpool. The other part if you switch that over to there pumps out the back, out here, you can have a different whatever fitting you want on there. I was uh, using it for cleaning and draining yesterday so I had it coming out the side into a bucket with a bit of hose on it. But if we put that back, it can go up the side here. Now up the side here, have another tap course turn on and off we turn that on then you'll get flow up the recirc pipe which goes along here of course and into the lid you'll notice that pipe is a little long there but I've been messing around with different uses for it because it comes into a spray ball there that's not a spinning spray ball it's a stationary spray ball But with that longer hose, I can raise it right up out of the way. So I can sit there like that. Now you can recirc through your mash. Well, there's also, if you have another vessel, if you don't have two fermenters, you might have a HLT on the corner, or you might even squeeze a little uh, pot on the side. There is talk of having you know, a little pot of some sort or urn. Then you can change your pump configuration so you can be sparging your hot water, using that for the sparge, sparging through your grain bed your mash uh, and into the boil kettle. Like with all these systems, there's a lot of different setups and ways you can have it, variations. But that's basically it. We come out through here, there's a sight glass you can see, you work through the whole time into the pump. Normally for recirc, you'd be up through here while this basket was down in the vessel doing your recirculation during mashing, then you could lift this up. Uh, if it was your want, you could recirc while it was up, 
or you could just let it drain and sparge via something else like using a uh, you know whether a vessel with a pump or or even a jug or you know you might know sparge And of course, this is inside the boil kettle. Uh, that is the 2200 watt 10 amp element. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And that is the pickup tube. There should be another one of those over to the right here for the whirlpool arm. I'll be getting another one of those soon. See the kettle has markings up the side, the highest marking is 35 litres and so you can see there you just fit 36 litres into the top very solid kettle with some rubber on the handles which is great for not burning yourself if you've seen some of my other videos you would have seen the nano x fermenter this is version 2 it has a slightly different lid a different clamping system and of course these ones have shorter legs they do, however, come with longer leg extensions. So if you do want to take them off and use them like a normal fermenter, you can. And these systems, of course, are highly customizable. You don't need to buy two fermenters with it if you don't want to. Uh, you could just buy one, or you could just buy none if you really wanted the table and set it up how you wanted it. That's a new design for a shelf between the legs. And there's the leg extensions there. There will be a more detailed video about the version two fermenter in the coming weeks. But there's as many ports there as you're ever going to need. Uh, these pressure gauges are stand-ins. I will have the real ones turning up. This is a very new unit. Spunding valve and air locking. You can put fluid in there if you want to see the bubbles. And your backup PVR, which is always good to have. And your coils, because since this isn't in a fridge, um, there's no reason why you can't take it off and put it in a fridge. But since this one isn't, uh, and there's two systems you can order an optional uh, G20 glycol unit and mine isn't quite hooked up yet I've got my old hoses on I haven't hooked it up but they will hook into there and so you can separately uh, chill them both and if you mod these I haven't modded mine yet you can mod them to run a heater as well so you can actually put a heat belt on them to heat and have the glycol unit chilling both fermenters but as mentioned yeah you can either order this you don't have to order this all at once you can order one fermenter and you can use that space for something else like a HLT or something like that you might not need a HLT you could heat up easily that's well that's 35 liters in that tank um, in that kettle and pour off you know your 12 to 15 liters uh, into an esky or another pot I was talking about putting a jacket on one of these I did, I did get the jackets and maybe pumping it into the fermenter and then pumping it back for sparge later if you want to sparge and that's enough for a brew on my normal brew day you know in, on my other systems you mash with about 20 liters around about and uh, sorry I'm not using imperial measurements at the moment but say you're mashing with um, five gallons and then sparge with another three or something like that uh, in metric here I'd, I'd mash in with say 20 litres and sparge with you know 12 to 15 litres and that's usually enough for a full batch uh, in the boil of course you want you know 28 to, to 32 litres uh, to get your full batch out and of course using these fittings are optional but you see it can be plumbed right through the table and you can have if you want to dump yeast or you you know put a Whatever you want to do, you can do it through that port. Um, back to that port, you can actually fill through that. You can connect a tri clamp fitting up to that and run a hose to the back of your pump. So when you finished your brew day, you could actually run it through a chiller first, which you probably would, and then out of the chiller and into here and fill it up from the bottom if you liked, just straight through the pump. There's a lot to go through, but we'll go through it in more detail in the coming weeks. 
I have these around the table. There's one there at the front over there. There's one here and there's a couple of other holes on the, in the side here and one's for the fermenters of course that uh, you can rig up however you like. We're going to have a quick look at the control unit. So normally you wouldn't have your cord wrapped around your heat sink. I was just keeping it out of the way. That's the cord for the temperature probe. And when I saw the add, I went, oh no, I haven't got three phase or anything, but these are just waterproof uh, connectors. Now mine has got, so someone will probably notice, the mine's got a 15 amp and a 10 amp. But you don't need, if you haven't got 15 amp, there's no need to worry. You don't need one. Uh, you, you, that's one of the options you can choose. Because the element in this one is a 10 amp one at the moment, and that should be enough to do you know, a single batch with. Though, if you have a 15 amp power circuit in your house, uh, and you can swap this out for a 15 amp element tri-clamp, uh, then you can use 15 amps with it. Now, why is there two? Well, the reason is it keeps the, the elements sort of isolated from the pump. So you can, you know, dedicated element uh, power and you can have a different power source for your pump. So what I would do here, that's the 15 amp plug that would go into my 15 amp socket, of course. And don't be worried, a normal extension lead fits these. You don't need to have these waterproof things on the other end. I can show you that in a minute. So that would be under my 15 amp extension lead. And then my element gets plugged into that one there. Just if you're wondering, there's no power cords going through here. This is just a support system like a stand, so you can move it around to wherever you want. So here's my normal, that's just a normal 10 amp 240 extension lead. And I'd grab the 240 one there and just give it some power. And with this one here, the other 240 10 amp, I should say, is for the pump. I'm not going to turn the pump on now, I don't have any water in it. Here's my 15 amp power lead. Now, as I said, you don't need a 15 amp power lead. You just have to order the, the 10 amp setup. But I happen to have the 15 amp. And same thing again. And plug that in there. And then my element, even though I am using the 10 amp element, it doesn't matter go in there. Does matter when you do it the other way around, of course. That should give us power to the control panel as well. This is what they're calling the Nano Boss. It's a touch screen PID controller uh, and it can do a hell of a lot more than just this single vessel system. You can go in and set up your mesh profiles. I haven't set any up yet of course. You can set up a boil profile if needed. Fluid transfer, you can have solenoids. This doesn't have any solenoids in this system, but if you do have uh, solenoids, you can control them from here. And it has what I've been using until I get it set up properly, a manual mode. I should mention as well, because it is PID, it does have a learning system. So before you use it for brewing, you should fill it up with water and it'll, it'll run through a series of tests. It'll heat it up and then see how long it takes to cool down uh, so you can really, really dial in those temperature values. Yeah, so this is the manual mode I was using for cleaning. You could use this for brewing as well. You know me, I'm, I like doing things manually. Uh, there's a temperature there, that's your target temperature of 75 degrees. There's your time there. And there's the power of the elements when it's on. So if you've got your full brew day automation, you have your timer delays for you when you want to heat your water before your brew day so it's ready to go when you come out. High res color display with Wi-Fi updating for the latest features. It can be used from 90 volts to 260 volts. Okay, to the competition. Yes, this is a worldwide giveaway. There will be one system given away. The Nano X TK36 valued over 6,000 Australian dollars. The entry details and rules will be on the Cheeky Peak Facebook page. Giveaway posts will be bookmarked at the top of the Facebook page. The winner will be announced on the 20th of March. So you'll have two weeks, around two weeks, to get your entry in. 
that's just fair. Not everyone can see this video when it comes out, so it gives you two weeks. And I'm sorry if you've missed the date. Keep your eye on my channel. Subscribe and click the bell. Make sure to check out the Cheeky Peak website. I'm not paid by Cheeky Peak. I'm not affiliated by Cheeky Peak. They did give me the unit for review and testing. All the links you will need are in the description of this video. So that's it. It looks like a great system. All the details you will need to enter the competition as described will be in the description below. Follow the links to where you have to go. Of course, in the weeks to come, I'll be doing much more detailed videos on how to brew with it, how to use it, and we'll talk a little bit more about it. And of course, another thank you goes out to Cheeky Peak. And if you like this video, please press the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please subscribe because there'll be more giveaways. There'll be a giveaway in the next few days. The t-shirt might have been a hint. And look at this fancy hot packet. Might have a pack of these to give away and a, and a show bag even, and maybe one of these shirts. So keep looking out. That'll be in the next couple of days as well. My name's Gavin. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks to my subscribers. Thanks to my patrons. Because without the patrons, these videos couldn't continue. Consider checking out my Patreon. Thank you. Cheers. please consider joining our Instagram page and Facebook group. So that's it. All the details you need will be in the description. Enter it. I would. Again, thank you to Cheeky Peak, of course. And keep what... So another... So of course, another big thanks goes to Cheeky Peak. If you like this video, please... Play th <laughs> so, uh, of course, another big thank you goes out to Cheeky Peak. And if you like this video, I can't talk. I'll be doing much more detailed videos on how to use it and what I think of the unit in the...